Hi everybody. Uh, it's been a long time, but this will be our second installment of our bunny videos. More to come. Uh, if you like our video today, give us a thumbs up, subscribe, share with your friends. It does us all a favor. So today, as I said, is our second video. If you watched the first bunny video, we went into basic digitizing. We brought in some pieces. These were for a traditional applique um, table runner. So you would normally trace these out, put them on fabric, and then go through the process of adding a stabilizer and, and doing traditional applique by hand. Or you could do it by machine. Uh, I don't wanna do either. I don't have that kind of time, so I thought because I love the pattern and I thought it was so cute. I would love to do this, but I'm never going to do it the regular way. Why don't I take it into software and make it into an embroidery project? So that's what I did. And in the last video, uh, I showed you that we scanned the pieces with a copy machine into my computer and how to create the basic embroideries, the basic applique or, or, stitched out embroidered pieces necessary to make this. Uh, so if we look over here, here it is in real life. So I've taken and created four embroideries. There's a bit of an evolution here because as I started, and the one we're gonna use today is the first of our pieces, here he is here. He's very cute. He's got a little tail, uh, flower tail here, a fern, some eggs. Uh, but once I saw him stitched out, I wasn't crazy about his accessories over here. I thought the bunny was great. I like the size of the bunny, but his stuff is too small. So I've got these little baby ferns and the eggs are really small. So in the next one and in the subsequent uh, embroideries, you can see that I've taken that same shape and I've increased the size and I increased the size of the eggs. Then I move on over here that this, um, this embroidered fern here is bigger and the eggs are bigger. But when I got down here, I was really pleased. Um, I added a layer of, um, batting behind my egg so he's a bit three-dimensional it's much bigger and I think the scale to the bunny is much better so that is the evolution of my bunnies today we're going to look at this is our first embroidery design so using the pieces that we made in the last video I brought them all together and this was the result so let's look at this so when I look at my bunny, I have my cute little bunny, our base bunny that we made in the last one. Our flower is all perfect and nice. We've added the ears. But over here, looking at my fern and my eggs, they are just not doing it for me. So through the beauty of having a film strip, I can come over here and I can select my bunny, which puts a box around him. I'm just in the digitizing. So I've taken my EDO file that we talked so much about in the last video and I've reopened it. So it opens it up here. I can still see the background picture that we used to, to create our bunny pieces um, behind it. So I'd still have the background uh, and I could actually reduce what I can see. So I've come to view and within view, you can see my background and there's a slide here, negative and positive. I can grab this and I can make it go towards the uh, less. And as you look here, my background picture is slowly disappearing until it's gone. So if I wanted to reference the background picture, uh, if I decided I was missing something or I didn't like the shape of something and I wanted to bring that back, I can do that in view. But if I find it distracting, which oftentimes I do 
when there are multiple pieces that I'm working with. Uh, it's nice to be able to make that background disappear and get them out of the, out of the way. So back to where we were, I'm gonna go to the home and we're back to our little fern that we wanna make bigger. So as we know with regular editing of made designs, we tend to stay within the 20% rule. So I can make things 20% larger than the original or 20% smaller than the original without really changing the stitch count and, um, and fiddling with the foundations of that design. So I stay within the 20% rule. I don't have to change much without fearing that my stitch out is not gonna look nice, whether it's not gonna be too dense or too sparse. But since I'm in digitizing, I can go nuts. I don't have to worry about the 20% because when I export this, it's going to be recreated. Um, so I can just take these, the little handle here that I have in the corner of my block and I can just make it big. I can drag him up and look at that. See, now it's like three quarters of my bunny size. I found that in the stitch out that I did before, that worked the best for me. I really liked how that looked. So now I can go and I can grab one of my eggs. If I take my little eggy from the film strip, it puts a box around it. It's now editable and I can just make it a little bigger. So that's a cute one and move it over a bit. Now I'm gonna come back to the film strip and I'm gonna find my other egg. So here's my other egg. I can grab that. And here it is and make it a little bigger. Let's see, just like that. That doesn't look so good. If you don't like what you did, I can always come back up to undo and it puts it back where it was. Now I can try it again. I'll grab a different handle, see how I do with that. Oh, much better. And bring that one over here, just like that. Very cute. Maybe I don't want them touching though. So I'm gonna move that over and bit, have them just close. And what do we do when we can't see how close we are? We come down to zoom to rectangle right here. And if I click that, my cursor becomes a magnifying glass. And I can come over here, click and drag a box, and I can really get to see how close I'm putting those together. I can be very precise. So if I come over to my egg, oop, wrong egg, this egg. This is the egg I wanna choose. Now I can use the mouse and I can move it over or I can also use the arrow keys on my keyboard and when I want to be super precise I can just come over here and I can click those and you can see my my eggs have come about as close as I can uh, without having them touch. Now I'm happy there. I'm going to come back down to the corner to zoom to fit. And if I, if we back up a little bit, if I click zoom to fit, it brings me back out to a, a normal range. So now let's see what's next. We have our bunny is cute. We have our fern and eggs have all been resized. If I click on just nothing, it deselects whatever I have selected. So I won't accidentally move something or change something. So now I think he looks great, but something I noticed in the stitch out is that when we add things to the screen, that becomes the order that they will stitch out in. So when I digitized this, I must have, and we can look over in the film strip here, it goes color change, which is really just selecting a color. Then I have one ear, so if I click that, it highlights the ear. 
And then next I have the bunny body followed by another color change and I have the ear, the second ear. So if I let this run like this, we would completely applique one ear, then the body, then go backwards and do the other ear. I really want those ears to be done um, sequentially before the body. And when you digitize, you have to think about the order that it's going to stitch out in and you want to move from background to foreground. So I can't stitch out the tail that's on top of the bunny before the bunny's body. Just the same, I want the ears to kind of settle behind the bunny body. So those have to come first. So it's okay that I digitize them in that order because I have the control to move their position now. Uh, so if I come over to the film strip here, I can select that second ear and I can come down here and I can move their position backwards. So if I wanted it to be the very first thing I stitched out, I can move it to the back. So it says move to the back of the design move the selected objects to the top of the film strip to be stitched out first. The first thing that stitches out has to be a color change, but I could click that, see if I click it, it's going to tell me that I have to have, it has to have a color change first. So that's okay. The next button over here is move backwards move the selected objects up one step in the film strip to be stitched earlier. So that's all I have to do. I've selected my ear. Here he is in the, oh, you know what? I'm gonna ungroup this first because those two things are grouped together. So I'm gonna click ungroup. Okay, so now I've moved that bunny by selecting the second ear and clicking this button down here, I've moved his position to be stitched out before the bunny. So before the bunny's head and body. So now it will stitch out the left ear, then the right ear, then the bunny's body, and then we move on from there to the flower and then move on to the fern and eggs. So that's gonna be a much better order of operation because our bunnies gonna our, our layers are gonna turn out nice. So I guess that's gonna be it for this lesson. I the first one was very long. If you guys go back, uh, I hope you liked it. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them below and give us a thumbs up. And I guess that's it. Uh, tune in next time. Uh, we're gonna break down the pieces of the applique and show you how to, to make uh, color changes and change stops and things like that. So come back, but for now, keep stitching.